Hey guys, good morning. Happy Tuesday. It's Daryl here. It is 4 a.m. bright and early here in Connecticut on the East Coast. You can see I'm, I just got out of the shower. My hair is still wet. This is one of those mornings where I, I got so much going on in my mind. I can't sit down and wait to do these this video. I got so much I want to talk about. I, I can't stop. I'm, I'm very impulsive in this way. Compulsive, whatever you want to call it. Obsessive. All right. I'm going to just say, first of all, the, one of the, th the key reasons I thought this, I had hopes for this channel being successful was that I, I kind of consider myself, you know, you know, despite being a recovering addict and an artist and, uh, you know, the little differences, I, I kind of figured I'm an average guy, an average American, an average human being. Uh, and I, 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 I'm guessing from a lot of the, the groups I've been into, like the NA, the rooms we call them, NAAA, and other places throughout my life that we're all we're all a lot alike. So the the point of my channel was that I'd come on here and I'd just talk from my heart and a lot of people would be able to connect with that. That that was my goal. Just be myself and I thought a lot of people would say, you know what, I feel I, I get you. I feel or or even the people that don't feel like me have different opinions would still understand. Cause just talking from your heart seems like the best way to go. All right. Um the, these these first videos of the day, I usually have a lot on my mind, and I'll talk about two or three different things. And then the second video of the day, I kind of hone in on one that really gets my attention that I think is the most important or the most, or gets me the most riled, to be honest. All right, stick with me here. All right, I'm going to talk about Israel. I'm going to talk about, but my, my point, I want to talk about Iran, okay? Now, like I said, I consider myself average. I got a pretty good idea of how, you know, Israel, how it came about. After World War II, we divided area up. We gave um, Jewish people their homeland. Yeah, but in doing that, in carving the, the spoils of World War II up, we created a lot of future issues. All right. Now, by giving Israel the, their homeland back, um, the Palestinians were living there. Uh, I, 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 being a Native American, I feel for the Palestinians. I know a lot of people think right off the bat, they think terrorists, but part of me can empathize. I can empathize with them. Um, you're living there and all of a sudden you're, you're pushed off your land. Like you're nobody, like you are the enemy. You've lived on this land your entire life. Your grandfather, your great, great grandfather, you know, everybody's lived on this land and then you're just pushed off it and dehumanized. And treated like you're nobody and key and they keep pushing them and in, in, in these new settlements and being a native american i can relate to that but i i i feel for jewish people too i've had i had a close jewish friend that i had in uh when i was driving for uh the newspaper company marvin brownstein uh, he was a, 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 an old jewish guy in his 70s and me and him were like this and i used to ask him all these questions why do people why do people blame Jewish people for so all this stuff? Why do people hate Jews? And I'd ask him straight out this, this, these, these questions straight out. And he knew I was a, a, a full-blown addict at that time. I used to actually ask him to borrow money because I spent all my money on drugs. And he was the one person out of like 200 people in that building that would lend me money. And I'd always pay him back. He was a good man. You know, so I feel for both sides. But my point here, okay... Iran, it's come to come to light that Trump has come out and brought up the issue. Is, is it possible for him to bomb, to hit a missile strike on Iran before his term's over in the next couple of weeks? To, to a missile strike on Iran in the next couple of weeks on their nuclear facilities. I think... That, I can't pronounce the name of the town. It begins with an M. Natems. The name of the town in uh, Iran. I'm sorry, I'm not a newscaster. All right. And even Pence, and I think as his, his ex uh, um, head of Department of uh, Defense, Esper, I think these guys tried to talk him out of it. Pompeo. There was, I think there was like four guys that it's not a good idea because... If you do a missile strike on one of these these targets where Iran is now, let me back up a bit. Now 
I never understood. I never understood the two, the uh, Trump coming in and just ripping up our agreement that Obama had made with Iran. The way I saw it, the way I understood this was, look, as technology and everything moves forward, people, these countries are going to get nuclear weapons if they don't have them already. It's going to happen. We see, we see university kids being able to build nuclear weapons at this point. It's just a matter of getting their uranium. And if you got enough money, you get the uranium. All right? So I understood Obama's method as, look, this is going to happen, so how about we do this? We bring them into the club slowly and watch over them as we, as we let them come into the, the community of people that have nuclear weapons and nuclear power. So we can watch them and let, introduce them into, into this club, which makes sense. It's going to happen. It's going to happen one way or the other. It's, it is going to happen. I mean, you can only, you, you know, it's, the more you bomb somebody, the more, it, of course, if somebody tells me not to do something and then punches me in the face, what do you think I'm going to do? You know, which is, so Trump comes in in 2018 and just rips this up. Now, the deal was we would go in, we'd have UN inspectors go in and make sure and they had limits uh, of how enriched this uranium could be and how much they could have. And they were abiding by this. It was going smoothly. Now, I guess Trump, I, I never understood why Trump and his supporters were against this. Because it, it's going to happen. Like, look at North Korea and, and Ob uh, Trump's failed mission there. He was besties. He was besties with Kim Jong-il. And then, and then, what was it, a month or two after Trump and him met, uh, Kim Jong just basically flipped him off and did some more missile tests. Come on. Come on, Trump supporters. That, that, that macho bull just isn't working. I'm American and I can do whatever I want. We rule the earth. No. No, man. It's just, it doesn't work that way. You know, we, we aren't all that. All right, so what we discovered is they, they've been, Iran's been continuing to let the inspectors in. See, Trump thought he could rip up the agreement, but he still wanted them to stick to it. You know, he could rip up their, our side of it, but he, wanted, he, he expected them to keep the uranium levels down and the enrichment down. Which, <laughs> why would they? You know, we were reducing our embargo, our, our sanctions on them. And then Trump said, no. You know, we're going back to the old deal. We're not doing you any favors. We're putting the sanctions back up. But you got to stick to the deal. Come on. Come on. See, that's, that's Trump's, Trump's go-to. You know, when in doubt, tear up the agreements and screw everything. <laughs> you, know, you know what it reminds me of? When somebody's losing a monopoly when you're a kid and they flip the board over. Whoops. <laughs> that's freaking Trump. That, that's his genius business tactic. Flipping the board over. All right, so Iran now has 12 times the amount they had back in 2018. 12 times the amount of fissionable material of uranium. And it's, it's extra enriched. And they have more centrifuges for all this. They've increased 12-fold. It makes them that much more dangerous. Surprisingly, they're still letting UN inspectors in there. They're basically saying, you know what? You ripped up your end of the agreement. Fine, we're just going to do what we want, and you do what you want. And we've lost contact with them. We've lost that agreement. So now they are enriching uranium without any of our constraints, any of our, our, our overwatch on them. You know, and how could that be good? You know, I think Trump supporters just saw anything, any kind of agreement. If it had to do with Obama, an agreement with Iran, ooh, bad, bad, couldn't be good. So now, so now, with two months to go before Trump gets dragged out of the White House, he wants to, uh, to he's considering a missile strike on Iran. How do you think Russia and China are going to take that? We're talking about World War III, no doubt, no doubt. We, we, we have, if we send bunker bombing missiles to take out all this nuclear stuff, uh, and Trump, in his last days, as lame duck president, pull, tries to do this, and he don't. He doesn't care. He's just going to hand this over to to Biden. Oh man! And I, I could see this is something he would do too. 
you know, and it was one of the, it was one of those evenings last night and one of these mornings where, you know, I, I was happy to see Biden win, but it, it was a very short, I would even call it a, a, a victory to see how many people voted for Trump. First of all, 70, over 70 million people just uh, depressed me. It, 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 it made me wonder what is wrong with people. Um, Okay, I can see him at 10 minutes now. I'm going to have to do more videos because I got more to talk about. All right, so this is what he's considering. Hopefully, he's been talked out of this. But it worries me because, as we know, Trump says one thing one day and the next day, and it doesn't matter what anybody tells him. So this is a possibility that he's going to do a, a, take a missile strike on, uh, do a missile strike on Iran. And, and again, Trump supporters think that, you know, they have this vision of the eagle, and America and all that, you know, and it's this false sense of bravado. It's these these guys that are really cowards at heart. That have, I've talked about this before. It, it comes down to a, a schoolyard bully. People that really don't haven't been punched in the face really good. You know, I'm gonna go back to that again. You know, people that don't understand what blood actually smells like, what a, a large amount of blood smells like and stuff like that. They think, you know, war is something like a movie or a video game. Let's do it. America. Yeah, America kicks ass. You know, and uh, I've never been to war and I've never been in the military, but I'm guessing, I'm guessing there's probably a lot of military people that might agree with me that war isn't pretty. All right, I'll be back later with some more videos. You guys have a good Tuesday.